Welcome to Scorched Earth. This is going to be a mid-month reading for the sign of Libra, Sun, Moon and Ascendant. For mid-March, 15th to the 31st or thereabouts. Remember, time is fluid, so it can kind of leech either side. Uh, if you don't know what your sun or... Uh, no, you know what your sun sign is. If you don't know what your moon or ascendant signs are, have a look at the uh, description box below. There's a link down there that will help you. And then once you've found out what your moon and ascendant signs are, have a watch of your videos for those as well. Because sometimes they can give you some insight that is missing from uh, videos that you're still with the sun. So, um, what else to tell you? Oh, I'd like to express some extreme gratitude. Uh, yesterday, in the early hours of yesterday morning, I sailed past 10,000 subscribers and I'm so thankful and humbled and literally leaking gratitude from everywhere uh, for each one of you who has liked and shared and subscribed and commented and reached out for personal readings and donated like I love you all to the moon and back thank you so much um what else mercury retrograde has ended yay ended yesterday well it went direct yesterday <clears throat> but uh you know it's it's going retrograde again in june so don't get too excited um i hope you managed to use the energy successfully um, it being in Pisces kind of floored me a little bit. But we Leos don't deal very well with that energy. It's it's very ungrounded and uh, emotional. Oh my God. Anyway, <clears throat> it'll be airy season soon. Air and fire go together very well. So it'll be a good period for you, I think. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's get three cards. I'm not pulling clarifiers, I'm just going with three cards to see where your energy is at right now. Whoa, that's the first one. The first one is the Ace of Wands. I like that very much. I've got some that have dropped out and some that are trying to flip, so I'm going to straighten all of those out. I only want the jumpers. I did see the Wheel of Fortune though. That was nice. Let's see if it actually wants to come out. Two more cards for where Libra is at right now. Where Libra is at right now. That was the Justice card that just tried to show its face. Again. Which is your card? One more card for where Libra is right now, please. King of Pentacles. I like it very much. Right. So, at the bottom of the deck we've got the Three of Swords. But it's followed by the Page of Cups. So, I seem to recall in the last couple of readings there's been this uh, there's been these difficulties that you've been having internally. Like, things that have been making you feel quite sad, but I think we kind of got to the bottom of the fact that a lot of it was just you not really trusting yourself and trusting your own abilities and I feel like with the page of cups underneath that that is something that you are making small steps now to rectify you see it for what it is you understand it for what it is and there's a sense of you resolving to change that I think <coughs> good for you oh Phoenix please no so the first card you've got is the ace of wands I love this card obviously because it's a wands card <coughs> But it talks about a spark of inspiration. It talks about creativity and passion and things like that. You can talk about new projects. You know, maybe you've got an idea for something new. I know that you have been working on something quite close to your heart for for the last wee while. Certainly, it's been coming up in the last few months' readings. But this is something new, or it could be a renewal, a renewal of passion for something that you have been doing. You know, maybe all the worrying that you've been doing over the last few months kind of rather took the shine off what it is that you've achieved. And this is here because you've either had a new idea for a new project or something about the, the way in which you've changed the way that you view you've already, what you've already been working on has kind of renewed that spark for you. It's brought the passion back for what it is. Seeing these, 
There's a castle up on the hill and there's the trees down here. The trees are very small, but they're perfectly formed. And I feel like, I feel like it's a renewal because I'm looking at these trees and these trees are already here, they're already established and this wand presumably has come from one of these trees down here. So it feels like a renewal of passion and enthusiasm for what it is that you're doing. That's excellent, I really like that. The next card that you've got is the King of Pentacles. Now this could be a Capricorn or a Virgo or a Taurus in your midst, strictly Taurus. <clears throat> Mm. But he's sitting under a tree. And I wonder if perhaps this is this little tree down here in the corner. In which case I feel that this is more of an energy that you are exhibiting at the moment. I ain't looking there. It's sat under a tree. No. I'm gonna get these little trees down here. I, I feel like this is you sitting under this tree, in which case this is you sitting under the canopy of the thing that you planted, of the thing that you have been creating and working on, given a lot of yourself to. It's been hard work. You put a lot of yourself into it. I'm, I'm struck by the proximity of the king to the tree. You know, it's almost like you're one and the same. There's a lot of you went into what this is. And it's taken some time. Like there's moss on the trees, but the, the apples there, they're fruiting. And, and this is quite an abundant feel, you know. And combined with this card here, together, it makes me feel like the abundance that is now that is now being created, these apples on the tree and this chap with his, with his hand on his pentacle there. Yeah. Resting it lightly, not uh, not clutching it to his chest like we would see in, in other depictions of the other court cards or, you know, the pips or whatever. <clears throat> yeah, it feels like you've come full circle on yourself and you are now appreciating what it is that you have created. You see the value of what you've created and you see the value of the work that you put into it. And now you're starting to feel quite comfortable with being in such close proximity to your creative projects, being associated. People understanding that there is so much of you in this and not feeling quite so frightened about it as you were before. You know, this is somebody who sits in his own energy very, very strongly. You know, you have put in the work, the pentacles, his work, his effort, you know, it's all of that sort of thing. But he's sitting on a stone throne, right? It's like you've planted your flag now. we are going, right, this is me. This is what I do. This is what I'm involved in. This is what I've created. <sighs> like it or not, I'm quite proud of it. And the last card you've got is the Nine of Cups. Now, the Nine of Cups is the wish fulfillment card, right? Obviously, it's water energy. But we're talking about something that is emotionally fulfilling. And it's interesting that we've got these two different energies here. We've got something that is it's kind of resource-driven, as, as, uh, as the Pentacles suit is. It talks about things in the material, you know, things that you can identify in the material. But then we've got something here that is far less tangible right it's all about how you feel and the image of this woman sat next to this stream with all of these cups dotted about is is contentment right and because it's a nine nines to me speak very much of the internal right just like it's almost always solitary figures depicted on these cards, right? And you've got the, the Nine of Pentacles, and that is somebody who is materially self-sufficient. Like They look after themselves. They do their own thing. This card is talking about somebody who is emotionally fulfilled by something that they did. And we've got this little bee down here. For me, bees very much talk about industry. You know, always busy, busy, busy bees. Yeah. <clears throat> they work hard. This is the connection between these two cards. You know, you've worked very hard on something and suddenly it is becoming emotionally fulfilling in a way that you had once hoped for, but at the same time didn't. Um, 
trust yourself to hope for, right? Kind of pulling yourself back from from hoping too much, but it's here. It's in your it's in your energy right now. And she's very content and she's very easy with it. It's almost like it worked out a little bit better than you planned. It worked out better than you feared it might. And that's excellent and would explain why you're coming out of this energy now and trusting yourself a little bit more. And both of these characters in the King of Pentacles and the Nine of Cups, they are looking directly at me. You know, they're not gazing off to the side or, you know, looking at the feet or the knees or whatever. They're looking straight at me. It's like, it, it's, it's a sense of taking ownership of what it is and not being afraid to do so. Not being afraid of what people will think of you being associated with ever what this thing was that you were working on. That's cool. I like that very much. Right, let's get three cards and find out what's coming towards you for the last, ooh, the last two weeks of March. Cards are proper jumping. Hmm. So the first card that you've got is another ace. Oh, look, there's that Wheel of Fortune that I was talking about. It pops up. Love it. Right. <clears throat> that can refer to a Sagittarian, but I don't think it does. I think that this is this is an upswing in your energy, in your vibration particularly, possibly, and a sense of things improving for you quite dramatically in a way that you didn't anticipate very, very soon because... <laughs> two fucking aces on the table to start with but you put your heart and soul into something you created it brought it out into the world and despite your fears right you got over it and you took ownership of it and now it's making you happy that lifts your vibration right and it's calling in the wheel the first card that you've got is the ace of swords the ace of swords is your sword your sword of course it's your sword is your card Right. It's it's a card of the air suit. It's the seed of the the air element. So it talks about truth, honesty, integrity, all of these kind of things, you know, intellect, reason, logic. But what it also talks about is clarity, right? Crystal clear understanding of things. There's a certain mental dexterity about it, but you know, on a summer's day you can see for miles if you sat on top of a hill and that's kind of how the ace of swords feels to me like you can see clearly now the rain has gone I don't know. <laughs> but it feels like it's a new understanding that's coming in and i think with air signs particularly like you don't have to you need to do more than just feel something and you need to have more than just material stuff around like you need to intellectually accept what a situation is right that's really important to you and if you don't then it kind of doesn't matter how it makes you feel and it kind of doesn't matter what you've got around you because it needs to be up here and it needs to be seated and very firm in something that you understand i'm gonna break my own rule and just pull a couple of clarifiers because <clears throat> the next two cards are intriguing and so I just want to get a sense of making sure that I've actually nailed the first one before I move on to the second. Tell me about the Ace of Swords, please. I need to know about the Ace of Swords. Mmm. Right. How interesting. We've got the Hermit and the Hierophant. Now these are cards of Virgo and Taurus, respectively. But for me, they're actually, although they're both Earth, right, they do go along very nicely with this energy here. I know like air and Earth don't mix very well, but this is about introspecting somewhat, right? Being still enough to allow the answers to come up for you to be able to appreciate them intellectually. And the Hierophant talks about structure and it talks about tradition and hierarchy and all that kind of things but 
it can also talk about teaching. It can talk about guiding. And I feel like this is a sense of you connecting intellectually to your intuition and to some level of, of inner knowing that you have because the, 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 the Hierophant is a very structured card and it's quite a rigid card. It does have a spiritual kind of component to it and it seems like, like I was saying, you need to intellectually accept what has occurred or it doesn't really matter and I feel like this is what is starting to happen for you this is what's coming towards you in you know the last two weeks of March like whatever the ace and all of this stuff at the top is for you right not only is it making your blood run hot not only is it emotionally fulfilling you not only is it something that you can sit comfortably next to and say this is mine right there's an intellectual understanding of all of those things and it feels like there's a, there's a capacity for, for, for much more creative endeavour now that you've accepted that. You know, I have to take it as it resonates to you. But I do get a sense, I, I, trust is what I'm getting, like trusting yourself, trusting your ideas, trusting your expression. You know? Because... Because not to trust your own internal space is to block your own creativity. And that you should avoid at any cost. The next card that you've got is the Page of Cups. And I'm slightly baffled to see this here because this can be a person, in which case it could be a water younger sign. Water younger sign, oh my God. A younger water sign, Cancer Pisces Scorpio. It doesn't have to be. But as an energy, it's 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 kind of like it's, it's low level expressions of love. So rather than, you know, going to someone and saying, I, I think you're amazing here, have my cup. It's more about um, apologies sometimes. <sighs> because it's that it's, it's that lower level. We've got the fool to clarify and the magician. Mm, this, yeah, like I feel like this goes into exactly what I was just saying here. Like <clears throat> trust. You know, if I had a keyword for the fool, it would be trust. It's not new start and all of that kind of thing. It's 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 about uncharted territory, yes, but it's about going forwards in a particular kind of energy, and that kind of energy is almost blind trust, right? Just knowing that things are going to be okay and moving forwards. It feels like the Page of Cups is your, your slow little steps forward, trusting yourself, trusting what you now intellectually understand about yourself, about what it is that you create and about what it is that you can bring to the world. You know? With the Magician, which is another highly creative energy, we put the aces together with magicians and that's like that's really powerful it feels like there is a, a coalescing of the emotional and the intellectual here you know not favoring one over the other but seeing them together and using, you know, what what has an emotional draw for you as opposed to an intellectual draw. And like seeing where those those two things cross, because somewhere there at that crossing point is something that's really important to you. There's a direction to move off in. And once you've decided to do that, like you've got an incredible amount of of creativity. <laughs> An ability to manifest at your fingertips. And then we come to the Seven of Swords. Now, some people call this the Thief card, and I really don't like that because I think it's impossible to ascertain intent from this snapshot as depicted in this card right here. Okay, so it's... I feel more comfortable, more often than not, referring to this as, as a risk, right? 
they're clearly doing something risky. They're taking all the swords and they're running away. But they could quite easily be trying to prevent a wholesale massacre that was due to occur the next day, you know, as just stealing them away to, you know, smelt them down and make Monopoly pieces out of them or something like, you know, we'll say. It's about risk. It's about things that you kind of do underneath the radar, potentially, because there's, there's a possible... There's a possible risk to it. There's about seven of swords. Why is there seven of swords here for Libra? Seven of swords for Libra. <laughs> right. So what's coming towards you is the seven of swords, followed swiftly by the eight of swords, followed by the Seven of Pentacles, right? Now, cards are kind of all loitering around the same sort of point in the pips. The Seven is a risk. And I think this is saying very clearly, you are running the risk of, or you will run the risk of, Eight of Swords and Seven of Pentacles, right? <clears throat> the Eight of Swords for me is a card of feeling trapped, right? That's what it means. It, it's about being stuck in any particular situation. But the important thing about it is that you are not actually stuck, right? You just think you are. And you just think you are because, usually because of, of sabotaging patterns of thinking, actually, is what it is. It's that fear of hoping just in case, you know, you, you don't get it and then you'll be devastated and you'll be crushed or whatever. Like, it's being afraid to trust yourself. <laughs> you finally just got in touch with, with the ability to trust yourself. You've got the possibility of a brand new start, you know, in an in a incredibly creative, you know, way here. But there's a possibility of you snapping back again, right? We're back to trust yourself. Mm -hmm. Believe in yourself. Believe in your abilities. You are backed up with major arcana. There's all major arcana clarifying under here, right? There's, there's an aspect of a, a life lesson that you need to learn here, and the learning is the trusting yourself, because it's not going to see you wrong. Yeah, Sometimes things don't pan out the way that we expected, but we learn a lot from those. And if we can kind of take the lesson on board and release the rest, the stuff that you don't need, then you're constantly learning, you're constantly evolving, you're constantly levelling up, and that's important. Because then we've got the Seven of Pentacles, and this is, this is a card of the status quo, right? But more specifically, it's kind of... For me, it usually talks about whether you should should continue to invest in something that you've put a lot of work into, or whether it's time to divest. And um, I just noticed that there are trees on here as well. We're back to trees like we were at the beginning, right? So I think this is back to your creative project. This is back to the seed that you planted, <clears throat> which is now growing nice and tall. But it feels like a crisis of confidence all that work you've just done, getting yourself in touch with it, and then you're going to have a crisis of conscience about it. Confidence about it, not conscience. <sighs> we are still in the shadow period of the retrograde, and apparently that is still affecting my ability to speak. So, the Eight of Swords and the Seven of Pentacles together feels like stagnancy. It feels like hanging on to the status quo out of fear. My shit. <clears throat> because rather than it being a conscious decision that you're sat trying to make here, whether whether to invest or divest, right? It feels like you're kind of trapping yourself in a situation where you don't make that decision at all, right? And see this big elk that's above this woman here, right? And it just makes me feel of like I. I'll be honest, the first thing that I thought of when I saw it, even though I can see that it's an elk or a caribou or, you know, whatever it is, was, was people's descriptions of depression as a black dog, right? And it might not be full-on, you know, full-scale depression that you're dealing with, but this elk, this moose, this caribou, whatever it is, this black dog, that is looming over you while you sleep. 
and it looks like the same little girl that's at the bottom of the trees down here right this is this is your fear this is your fear of trusting yourself this is your fear of, of putting too much of yourself out into the world for judgment right even though you've done it already and it's worked out really really well for you you know you made all sorts of connections about how you work and how you think and you know and how you feel potentially the possibility of moving forwards and then snapping back again it's a continual process right it's not like you just wake up one day and you're right i'm confident i am you know able to do X, Y, Z, whatever it is, whether it's running a business, you know, whether it's, it's, you know, starting something new, whether it's art, any of these things. <clears throat> you don't just wake up one day and decide like, yeah, that, that's it. You know, the, the years of self-doubt that have plagued you are gone. Mm. It is a constant, consistent, conscious, practice and yeah I'm kind of drawn to the fact that the woman is lying down and she's asleep there right and this is when this is when this big black animal appears the only way that you counteract that is by tackling it while you're awake eventually this will start to filter through to your subconscious you know it won't be able to visit you in the night time in the dark because you'll have already turfed it out of your subconscious. Mm. I wish you would trust yourselves. Clearly very capable. Right, let's get you some cards of advice. Uh, three cards of advice for Libra, please. Two cards of advice for Libra. The first is the King of Wands. Second is the Seven of Cups. That's two kings now that you've got out on the table, and two ones, and the magician, and the hierophant. These are all very powerful cards. When are you going to accept that you're actually pretty good at what you do? Hmm? One more card of advice for Libra, please. Oh, you've got two, apparently. <sighs> Ooh, let's have a look. Ah, oh, yes. Okay. <clears throat> King of Wands, right? Strictly the card of Leo, but could be Aries and Sagittarius as well, but it's not that, it's an energy because it's advice, right? This king does not suffer from self-doubt. He is self-confident, he has high self-esteem. He's not arrogant. I mean, he can be in, in this aspect, but he's not, he's in this aspect here, right? He has faith in his own vision. He has faith in his own creative abilities. And um, you have this energy, right? The King of Wands is an entrepreneur. So if you have set up your own business, then this augurs really, really well for it. You know, it's continue on in that vein. You are on the right path. But if it's not, if it's some other kind of creative endeavor, this is the king that you want to see here. It actually is. The other kings uh, won't be anywhere near as much help. Channel this energy, right? But it also talks about living in the moment, right? Stop mulling things over in the past. If you've made mistakes in the past, like learn the lessons from them, take those lessons, move on, don't make the same mistakes. Like this is what the King of Wands does. He does not sit mulling over the past, you know, about how how he fucked up. And he's, he's not interested. He's, he's looking forwards whilst being here in the present, you know? There's a, there's a lightness of spirit about the King of Wands. Um, a, a, an ability to move, but not in the same way as the Knight of Wands. Like the Knight of Wands is quite a non-committal energy and it will just flit around from one thing to another. The King of Wands is a much more mature energy, right? So he's got all the best bits of the night. He's got that, um, you know, the spontaneity and the creativity and the, you know, the fun and the charisma and all that kind of thing. But he's also got a real sense of his own duties and responsibilities, you know, and he is to that degree, you know, much more responsible energy. But this is about what you need to take into yourself, you know, self-belief, he's absolutely got that. And then you've got Seven of Cups. Now, 
often this can talk about you know illusion and and um you know all the glitters not being gold and stuff like that but but this woman here is fully illuminated for the purposes of this you know looking at this card she's not in the dark like she usually is on other ones and normally they're a bit silhouetted and stuff she's right here she's she's in bright light she can see what she's doing and she's releasing these little butterflies out of her hand you know and they're just flying off lightly to go and land on all of these cups she can see what's in every single one of these cups and butterflies talk about intellect they talk about sharp wittedness you know you often see it depicted on the air signs thrones the butterflies it's like there are lots of lots of options that are open to you and you need to use the intellectual discernment to choose to choose what's right for you but this is a cups card right so we're back to that point where intellect and emotions collide, like at the, the, the point where there is full emotional and intellectual understanding, that, that little X there, that's where you need to sit, right? And that's what this is talking about as well. Be open to these things. Like don't be intimidated by the options that are open to you. Fully embrace them, investigate them, and find out which one it is that sets your mind on fire, but also sets your your heart on fire. Something, you know. <clears throat> and the last two cards that came out together were this, right? And this is more of a warning, right? Nine of Swords and the Hermit. It's the second time the Hermit's come out. But the Hermit here was good. Hermit here little bit more of a lesson right don't slide into this behavior the nine of swords is it's mental anguish you know it's feeling feeling tortured i mean it it, it can go down as low as depression and and you know mental illness and stuff like that but but at its best it's hideously overthinking situations you know it's being it's keeping yourself awake at night because because you're running over the same things over and over again. You're looking for ways to beat yourself up. You don't need to do that, right? When you combine that energy with the hermit, right? It, it's, it's dragging you into, it's not just into stagnation, but it's like thoroughly into the past. Instead of amalgamating the lessons that you've learned, you know, and using those to improve yourself moving forwards, it's kind of like like some big monster has dragged you back into a cave and it's not going to let you out, you know, until you've chewed off your own leg or something like that. Right? Don't slide into this. There is literally nothing that will improve about any aspect of your life if you overthink the shit out of it, right? Be as the king of wands. Be a bit more present, a bit more here and now. You know, the past doesn't exist anymore. The only thing that really does, or rather should exist, is what you learned, right? And what you learned is what helps elevate you up and off, you know, into amazing new things. And you have amazing new things very close by. So, check yourself. And if you find yourself doing this to yourself, stop it. Just stop it. Right? Find something nice to say about yourself instead. Get in the habit of just switching that voice off when it starts. But first you have to notice when it talks, because sometimes we don't. Yeah. And that can be a skill all in of itself. Maybe that's somewhere to start. You know, learn to tell the difference between that voice and anything else in your head. Like hear it when it speaks and then you can tell it to shush, and then you can replace it with something nicer. Right, I'm gonna leave it there for now. But I will be back in about oh, 10 days or so, I think, for uh, the oh, readings for March, good Lord. Um, yes, I don't have anything else to tell you. So, I love you all, um, take care, and I will see you soon. <laughs>